Now, each zone contains one data collector, and this is important to know. You can have one data collector that's active at any time in the zone. A data collector hosts an in-memory database that maintains dynamic information about the servers in the zone, such as server loads, session status, published applications, users connected, and license usage. And they act as communication gateways, you might say, between zones and server farms with more than one zone. So for example, if I have a zone in Chicago and another zone in Atlanta, the data collectors communicate information between those zones that they stay up to date about each other. To help you understand the different services that are available in a ZenApp deployment, I'm going to take you to the Citrix Documentation Center, or what we call the eDocs section of the Citrix website. So let's head to my computer and get started. And here we have an article entitled ZenApp Service Account Privileges. And if we scroll down through here, you'll see the table that lists all the many different services that are available. It's going to list the display name or the service name, the executable that actually provides that service, the logon account and startup type, uh, a description of the service, and then any dependencies. So for example, with our first service, the Citrix 64-bit Virtual Memory Optimization Service, this is part of the CTXS FOS VC64 executable, and it's going to run as the local system and its manual startup. As a description, it says dynamically optimizes 64-bit applications running on a ZenApp server. Now, if we go ahead and go down, you can see there's the Citrix Client Network, the Citrix CPU Utilization Management, and CPU Rebalancer. We have the Citrix CPU Utilization Management Resource Management Service. And here's the Citrix Encryption Service, which is going to enable secure communications with RC5 128 encryption between Citrix receivers and ZenApp. And that's the Citrix client and the ZenApp server. Now, if we scroll down, you can see that we have the Citrix Health Monitoring and Recovery Service. Um, it's what provides health and monitoring and recovery services in the event that problems occur. And it depends on the Citrix IMA, the Independent Management Architecture Service. In fact, that's the next one that's listed. The Citrix Independent Management Architecture Service, or IMA, is the service that actually provides management services within the farm. So this is a tool that allows for automated management within Citrix implementation. Now, I'm not going to go over every one of these services here, but I would encourage you to come to this page at the Citrix website, read through these different services to basically get an understanding for all the parts and pieces that actually make up the Citrix environment.